with the seaplanes Dornier Val and would have set up two more in Novaya Zemlya and in Bologda. With regard to these aids, a telegram sent by Consul Bompieri to the Italian Air Force is worth mentioning, in which it was underlined how the Soviet Meteorological Services Department had done its utmost to make RD available to all its stations and observers. But the Russian contribution to the expedition was not only material. The daily meetings held during the stay in Leningrad between April 15 and, 5 5 and May 5 were fundamental. The expedition staff discussed various aspects of the feat with the Russian military and scientists. For example, Nobile, Miraya and Zinoviev discussed um, three options of the route that the airship would have to follow to reach Kings Bay over what was considered the most difficult part of the journey before the polo of a flight. As you can see, the last route uh, chosen was this, from Gashina to Batso, passing from for Olonets, Pogenets, Camp Cantalax. Another option would have passed through Archangel. Uh, furthermore, some Russian pilots also attended a meeting on April 29 who shared with the Nobile some experience and related problems occurred in their planes. For example, on the Leningrad Konigsberg Kaliningrad route. I think, for example, to the phenomenon of the formation of a nice crust of five millimeters on the planes that uh, the Russian pilots shared with Nobile, which was useful for the general to take further precautions in relation to the airship. For example, Nobile, um, starting from this um, uh, view, decided to apply a kind of uh, um, miscela of glycerina and vaselina. The meetings took place in several places, from the home of the scientist Viktor Tikomirov to the Slack Observatory, now Pavlovsk, near Leningrad. The most important conversation was undoubtedly what the Italian correspondent Antonio Quattrini called a special meteorological Areopagus, which took place at the Hotel Europa in Leningrad on Saturday the 1st of May from 10 p.m. to midnight. On that occasion, Nobile, Eredia, Zinoviev, Tikomirov, Boris Multanowski, Finn Malgram collected in a summary all the scientific investigations carried out in the previous days. At this point, I think it's important to linger over what I consider the two main reasons behind the great Russian contribution to the Norge company. Also in this case, a future examination of the Russian archives may provide further elements of evaluation. Indeed, the question is not secondary, since, as we certainly remember, the, ex the expedition was officially under three flags, Norway, United States, Italy. First, there was certainly a geopolitical interest in the polar regions. Consider that um, the day the, the airship arrives in Leningrad, uh, the day after, the Russian government issued a decree proclaiming its sovereignty over any land or island Buddhists already discovered and those that could be discovered further north of the Russian and Siberian coast. A second major reason is the strong technical interest in the Norge airship. To analyze this second point, I would start from a phrase that was pronounced by Nobile during the conference organized by the Academy of Science of Leningrad on April 21. And uh, you can see the third photo on the, on the left. Um, you, um, there is, um, under the number four, there is Nobile and there is Larsen, for example. Uh, in this occasion, a Nobile said, our undertaking is twofold, an expedition of exploration, for which I give the credit to Amundsen, and an aeronautical feat planned by an Italian, for which I assume all responsibility. 
As a matter of fact, in both January and spring, the attention of military and civilism focused on the Italiansky dirigible, a vehicle that Nobile illustrated, illustrated in all these aspects in, on several occasions. From the Moscow conference organized by the Aviakin Association, and you see, you can see uh, the first photo on the left where you can read uh, in Italian is La Nuova Spedizione di Amundsen al Polo Nord, una grande iniziativa civilizzatrice, and there is also in Russian. Um, uh, to, to the one held in Leningrad at the Institute of Engineers of Ways and Communications. The indirect participation in the Norgay expedition therefore allowed the Soviet authorities to analyze and find out more about the type of a vehicle that could revolutionize civil and military aviation in the, in the rising Soviet power. For example, during the Gashina stop, 45 officers of the Air Force School, um, of which the commander was Kirillov, examined every detail and made sketches and photographs of the Italianski dirigible. And you can see a photo on the right uh, with uh, uh, Weinstein um, uh, of the Gubis Polkom and the Nobile. Uh, while analyzing the coeval Russian press, we have come across an interesting article published in the Becernaya Krasnaya Gazeta. Aronin, the author, was stressing that an airship such as Norge could have served several purposes of, for the um, Soviet Union, from defending borders to its use in the maritime route north of the Russian coast. Furthermore, as was pointed out in other sources, the use of airships such as Norge could have greatly reduced travel times. As you can see in the last photo, um, the airship covered the Leningrad Batso in Norway stretch in 19 hours, rather, rather than the three days required by the railway route connecting Leningrad to the Glacial Ocean, built on the eve of the Great War. The airship was also represented the main vehicle used in a possible transarctic air service, as Karpinski proposed during the Great Conference of the Leningrad Academy of Science. And this was a theme that was um, um, also said during the conference in Leningrad by other out Soviet authorities, um, or the possibility to use the airship in transarctic um, lines, such as that one uh, imagined uh, by uh, the, the German bronze of the, uh, the transcontinental uh, flight um, uh, with the airship. In conclusion, the Russian contribution to the Norges business was important and varied, motivated both by geopolitical and aeronautical interests. I also believe that in close connection with the Norge expedition, there is a wide range of issues that I would be glad to go to further investigate in collaboration with one or more scholars attending this important conference. For example, I think to the, this co international cooperation in the Norge transpolar flight in relation uh, to the process of diplomatic um, normalization, for example, between Italy, fascist Italy and Soviet Union, or between uh, Italy and Norway, and so on. Um, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, what about uh, questions uh, for you? Будут ли вопросы? It's a very interesting, of course, but I have no any questions because my, the theme of my next uh, uh, report is in connection with the same figures. Uh, I've got just a question. Uh, what was the cause of the conflict between um, 
uh, Nobele and Amundsen at the end of the expedition? Um, thanks for your question. I think, I think that uh, uh, for themes like this, it's important to cross-study documents of different countries, for example, Italy, Norway, and maybe, I, I hope, also Russia. Because uh, to study, for example, the origins, uh, if we look at the documents kept um, at the Vigna di Valle of, uh, the, or the Air Force uh, archive in Italy, there is um, a, correspondent, a correspondence between Nobile and Bonzani and other uh, authorities, for example, about the name of the expedition. Because uh, until February, until March, March the official name of this expedition was uh, Amundsen Ellsworth uh, uh, fly, um, expedition. In fact, uh, Mussolini uh, signed uh, the contract in uh, November uh, 1925 without saying anything. In a second moment, we, we, we can say that it was like a, a battle of prestige because uh, uh, it was Umberto Nobile who wrote, for example, to Bonzani, and uh, he, he does like an, a ringa, in Italian is a ringa, like a, uh, to motivate why instead the, um, the, Italia, the Ital Italy should have uh, been mentioned, for example, also in the name. So he, he says that Italians uh, were Donna, were, um, have done uh, uh, the most things about the expedition and so on. And for example, he proposed another name. So I think that uh, um, you know, um, uh, it's, all, it's all about a, a prestige battle. For example, and <coughs> only the second, then I, do, I don't take time away from the uh, next uh, uh, presentation. For example, uh, just think about the idea of uh, who thought, uh, who thought for first the idea to use the airship. In Norwegian newspaper, we see Amundsen say, I thought first to use the dirigible. Instead, the nobile, I used first. And we see like, authorities like uh, Roncagli of the Geographical Society that says, for a lucky coincidence, they thought in the same time. So I, I think that uh, it's a, 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 co a complex or small thing. And just uh, a, a last thing, if, for example, uh, on, on what the important to cross study these documents is, for example, uh, of the um, a kind of crust uh, constructed uh, on of a memory. Because uh, if we take the original contract of the expedition that is, uh, for example, kept 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 in Bodo uh, in Norway, he say that the leaders of the expedition are Amundsen and Ellsworth. Nobile is Luftskipet Führer, uh, so like a driver. Instead, after this battle for prestige uh, of Nobile to be recognized as a third leader aeronautical, for example, there was a, a, manif a manifestation in Tromso uh, in 1986 where there was created a stone, una, una lapide commemorativa, of we on uh, for the three leaders. So we see how uh, under a crust of memory, nationalism, a geography, there is still uh, a lot of history that, uh, in my opinion, uh, ha has to be studied. Excuse me. Thank you very much, uh, Pierre. Спасибо большое.